So I told her that I was gonna do the integration of the bars like super smoothly, you know, without being like, yeah, the Rock U energy bars are like the best bars in the tennis world, made in collaboration with Daniel Medvedev, and that the link is down in the description below to get them. Oh, we're recording already? What's up, guys, and welcome back to Gladiator Stripe, and this is yet another episode from the Dubai GT3 ATP 500 event where I warmed up Daniel Medvedev for every single one of his matches in the tournament. In this video, I will show you the behind the scenes of warming up a Grand Slam champion, talk about Andrei Rublev's default, and explain how I got his official accreditation from the tournament. To find out all that, watch till the end. Let's get it on. Glad. So, this is... What is this? Quarterfinals against Fokina. And Nico has been warming him up the entire week, I think, maybe for the exception of one day. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully the Daniel is feeling is feeling good. Now I'm just gonna pack up and I'll see you in the club. Pineapple juice like yogurt, sweet. Okay. Whatever. After the breakfast, I headed to the club and traditionally went to the lounge to get a coffee and then of course hit the gym a little bit. Because for those of you who don't know, it's always a good idea to warm up before you're gonna play with the world number three. I did some bicycle because, you know, I'm a professional tennis player. So something really funny happened during my fitness warm up. I went out of the gym and was walking uh, in the player's lounge hallway to get some water or something and Sebastian Corda was coming my way and uh, he was like, hi which was very unexpected for me because we've never met, we've never played before, so we didn't really know each other. And tennis players don't usually, you know, just say hi to everyone they see in the hallways. But anyways, in like 20 minutes or something, I come back to the gym to continue my warm up, and he goes, so when's the next video coming out? So that was freaking awesome. I really wasn't expecting Sebastian to be watching my videos and that's just insane. And by the way, he's a super cool guy down to earth and just very kind. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the funny story and uh, we, we gotta go play. While we were in the gym, Daniel once again told me that he was going to be about 10 minutes late to the warm-up, which is quite nice of him, but I still went there earlier to set up all of the cameras. And then it was time to play. I'm not going to stretch the training footage too much because although I know that for us tennis addicts we can look at Daniel play for hours but for the normal person watching it might get a little bit repetitive. Anyways Daniel was playing against Davidovich Fokina who as I already mentioned was warming up with Nico, my friend, this entire week. And although their head to head was definitely on Daniel's side with a 3-0. He isn't in his best shape right now and if Fokina plays well and doesn't serve underarms, he can be a super tough opponent. It's time for the usual cross courts and glad, sorry, but I will have to talk through almost the entire warm up because there was some Ed Sheeran playing in the background the whole time and I don't want to get a copyright claim from him. But yeah, I just love how effortless Daniel's game is. They say that Federer is the guy that makes tennis look easy and effortless, but I guess they just haven't seen Medvedev play. Just look at it, how smooth and easy the strokes are. The swing almost seems too slow for a player of his level. And ending with a sexy down the line switch, it's time to do the backhand cross courts. All right, glad. so we play the backhand cross courts. Daniel switches down the line with a close call and asks me if the ball was in. I say it's out because I saw it out, but one of the spectators watching the warm up says it touched the line. That's no surprise. Let's check if it did. Alright, pretty sure that it didn't, but you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. While you're writing the comment, Daniel and I will finish the backhand cross courts with this inside out forehand and it's time for the break. Glads, while we're taking this little break, let me remind you about our friends at Tennis Warehouse and Tennis Warehouse Europe because if there's absolutely anything tennis related that you're thinking of buying the link to get that anything like always is down in the description below together with our exclusive discount code and that really helps the channel and helps you save some cash and like always i like to recommend the atp and wta pro player section where you can find every single player's gear and just you know not having to google around what racket they use what shoes they use or whatever you can just go on their page and buy whatever you feel like me myself i'm thinking of picking up some uh, new Lacoste clothes so that you know it kind of matches my shoes but yeah feel free to look around and uh, get whatever you feel like let's get back to the video Glads, by the way i realized that medvedev isn't holding his racket with a continental grip on the volleys which is quite unusual and some would say that it's wrong but you know i guess you can't really say that world number three is doing something wrong with with his technique right because i guess it's working for him all right it's my turn to go to the net and the music is off so i leave you alone with the beautiful sounds of tents
Oh, this one is funny. So Jill passes me a ball at the same time as Eric does and it hits my head. Glads, if you're watching this video, unsubscribe. Absolutely not judging you whatsoever, but you know, why not subscribe if you're watching this? You know, it's it's not it's not that hard, and it really helps the channel and makes me very happy, honestly. And also hit the bell. But yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, check this out. So Daniel misses the serve and while Gilles Simon is walking towards me to do some coaching and tell me to step in on one return and then step back on the next one, which is, by the way, it's kind of cool to be coached by Gilles Simon himself. But anyways, Daniel is massaging his shoulder, which obviously suggests that if it's not causing him pain, but it's definitely creating some discomfort for him. Check out this return. Ooh. All right, we're done with the training and signing autographs. And yes, I signed a few as well. And by the way, all of the glads that I met back in Dubai, loads of love for you. You're absolutely amazing. But yes, now it was time for the match to start. I have to say that on that day, there was a bit of tension between Nico and I because indirectly we were kind of playing each other. Because, you know, he warmed up Fokina, I warmed up Medvedev. Okay, just kidding. But, but there was a little bit of tension. The match turned out to be a pretty secure win for Daniel, way less nervous than in the previous match against Sonigo. This time it was two solid sets and we were into the semi-finals. By the way, this was when Dasha, Daniel's wife, gave me the Rock You energy bars to try them out and, and see what I think. And uh, the whole point with these is that normal energy bars, they contain a lot of sugar, meaning you get that energy right after you consume the bar, but in a little bit of time, it kind of like just spikes down and you feel weak again. With these guys, on the other hand, they don't contain any high sugar ingredients. And in fact, the main ingredient is buckwheat, which means you get that long lasting energy and good flavor, even though they don't contain any flavor enhancers. And I don't know about the functionality. I guess I'll review them a little, you know, and tell you the results further on, on our Instagram here. But about uh, considering the flavor, I can give you a review right now. Let's see. Ooh, all right, let's see. So actually the taste is pretty nice. You know, it's not like it's right in the face. It doesn't, you know, surprise you. It's not super sweet. It's not anything. It's just, you know, pretty, pretty, you know, ongoing. I, I, I like it. You can totally have many of these during the practice or tournament, which is actually what Daniel does, which is, I guess, what can be a better advertisement. These were specifically made for him. So, you know, this one is actually like his. Dasha had to steal it from him. But anyways, if you're if you're interested, if you want to try these out, feel free to check out the link down in the description below because that's where that's where you'll find the link to get them. Anyways, let's move on. All right, Glad. So what's the plan for today? Well, uh, I'm going to go go warm up Daniel at 3.30, like always, on court two. He's playing the semifinals today against Uge Emerd. He beat uh, Hurkaj yesterday in a three-setter, which was, you know, I wouldn't say it was an interesting match, but uh, but a few interesting things happened. Nico is chilling over here uh, in agony from yesterday's Fokina loss. Yeah. Nico, do you have any any remarks? I like Medvedev, but I also like Fokina. I wanted Fokina to win. He's a great guy. I've talked with him a bit. I've trained with him these days. And he's actually a really nice person. He's really good. He's funny, you know. I like him. No, but he actually is a nice guy. I haven't met him as close as Nico did, but he seemed, he seemed pretty cool. Um, anyways, I'm going to pack up now. We're going to... 
We actually want to go to that store over there, which it seems like sells like some some gear, uh, and I need to get something. And then and then we'll head out to the club. I want to hit a little bit to feel the ball a little better from Ed with it. And, uh, and yeah, we'll keep you updated on everything that's going on. Entering the practice court area right now. Gonna grab a coffee from the lounge and then do a little bit gym, warm up. Then play some, hit some balls with the boys and at 3.30 we got the hit with Daniel. I love how the place gets super empty closer to the end of the tournament because obviously there's no players left. So it's like, usually this, this will be packed. I mean, I guess you can remember. But anyways, it's the last four in the draw left and uh, yeah, we're in for some good semifinals. Daniel against Thunberg and Rublev against Bublik, so. Hitting a two with, uh, is that in the frame? I stopped recording, I gave you the camera and I was like, the red button is to record. And you didn't press it. Sorry. It's okay. It's the time. I have to mention the stringing team at the tournament were absolute legends. Some of the best strong rackets I've ever played with and very nice people. I went to the stringers to pick up my rackets and uh, one of the stringers was finishing up the stencils on Andre Rublev's rackets. He had like four of them uh, getting ready. He looked at me and he was like, yeah, just one minute, I'll, I'll have them ready for you. I was like, okay, whatever, these aren't my rackets. I didn't say anything, but I looked at the other stringer and he, he knows me well, so he gave me my rackets ready and strong. And then the guy finished up the stencil and he was about to hand me the rackets, thinking that I was Andre Rublev, which was kind of funny. And then I said, it's not me, these aren't my rackets. He's like, oh, okay. So I picked up my rackets and went to the player's lounge and Andre was actually like right there. So I was like, Andre, they almost gave me your rackets by mistake. So, you know, watch out. So, you know, that was kind of funny. So we have Valor over there. I'm going to show you how to do the, the method of back and down the line, okay? Perfect, yeah. So guys, while I'm chilling here waiting for my practice with Daniel Medvedev, I want to talk to you about this uh, platform called the Royalties, which basically allows you to invest in tennis players and all kinds of other athletes. And uh, let me explain how that works. I mean, honestly, Glads, I've talked about Royalties uh, in my previous videos. I went into a little bit more details on how the platform works, how to get the Roy's and how to make money with it. But uh, yeah, in short, basically, it's a platform where you can invest in your favorite tennis players or other athletes. And to do that, you would have to follow the link down in the description below, create your account, and then buy the Roy's of your favorite, for example, tennis players. Then you can either wait and collect monthly yield or uh, sell them when uh, the price of those Roy's goes up because your favorite athlete is performing well, winning titles and things like that. I actually got myself some Medvedev Roy's, which made me a little bit of money, not through the roof, but it was, you know, kind of fun to make some money with, with the platform. And uh, yeah, there's actually a chance of winning a Rolex watch, which is kind of cool, and many other prizes for that matter. Sounds exciting. Well, that's because it's kind of cool. So check out the link down in the description below and get yourself some Roy's now. Boys and girls, Encore 2, like always, getting ready. Daniel's not here yet because that's good because I need to set up the cameras and stuff. But yeah, should be starting in a little bit. Because this was one of the last days of the tournament, the practice courts were getting disassembled. So there was this trolley on court and considering just how far Daniel stands on the returns, I decided to move it out of the way. And that's Daniel's semi-final opponent, Hugo Umber, walking from his warm-up. So yes, Daniel was set to play against Hugo and although rankings and title-wise, Medvedev is way superior, their head-to-head -head was actually 2-1 for the French, so it wasn't going to be easy. Some of you guys were asking whether Daniel remembered me from last year, and yes, he did. I forgot to tell you about how we met on the first day in Dubai in the previous video, but basically, Daniel arrived to Dubai way earlier to practice as he wasn't playing any tournaments before Dubai. When he asked for a hitter, I was watching Donna Vekic's match against Sabalenka with her team in her box. So Omar didn't want to pull me out of the box and say, hey, you need to practice with Medvedev. But after Donna's match was over, I went to watch Daniel's practice with the other hitter and it was Thorvin from Belgium. You might remember him from my last year's videos from Dubai. However, Mertens, a Belgian WTA 
player specifically asked for Thorbin to practice with her right after their training with Medvedev. Thorbin had no idea about it and was still on court with Medvedev past the time that they were supposed to be practicing with Mertens. So Omar asked me to go inside the court and tell him to, you know, go warm up with Mertens and offer Daniel to hit with me if he still needed a hit. When I entered the court, Daniel was talking to his coach, Jill Servara, and I had to kind of interrupt them. And yet Daniel recognized me right away and was like, hey, you're here, I didn't see you around. When I said that Thorbin was requested on another court, he said, oh yeah, if you want to stay and keep hitting, it's totally cool with me. Later, Daniel actually specifically mentioned that he wanted me to warm him up for this tournament as last year, he did, you know, pretty well taking the title. Here, Gil Simon is actually telling me that he doesn't like that Daniel is not letting the ball bounce for the smash and hitting it like as a volley because it, he's kind of restricting his movement and it's, it's bad for the technique, but Daniel is still doing it because, you know, it's Daniel. Glads, I asked for like 7,000 likes, I think, for the previous video. I think we're at about 600 now. I guess we're not getting to 7K, but Glads, can we do, let's just say, let's do 2K for this one. I think we can do it. I think it's a, you know, it's a doable number. Let's see if you can do it. So just like that, the warm-up is over and it's time to get ready for the match. Before Daniel's match, there was another semi-final taking place. It was Andre Rublev against Alexander Bublik. And this whole huge conflict happened where Andre actually got defaulted. For those who don't know, uh, there was an important point taking place and uh, um, Bublik missed it out, but the line empire didn't call it. And uh, Andre ended up losing the point and he screamed, at the line umpire supposedly uh, calling him a uh, effing moron, which he actually didn't. The line umpire himself didn't speak Russian, but there was another guy standing next to him who heard it, who spoke Russian, and then went and told uh, the supervisor that, uh, yeah, Rublev called him whatever he called him, which actually wasn't the case. And then Rublev got defaulted without even checking a replay and without having a you know, solid proof of him saying that. And uh, actually looking at the replays, you can obviously see that that's not what he said. Yet, Andre got defaulted and he actually got his prize money and uh, points deducted or like not given to him at first. Then, you know, with some appeals and everything, he got them back, at least at least that. But a tournament lost a really, possibly one of the best matches of, of the tournament and then kind of ruined the victory for, for Bublik and ruined the day and the week and possibly the month for... Andre, right after it happened, I actually talked to uh, Sasha Bublik and I asked him like, what the hell just happened? Because we, you know, we were in the moment, we had no idea. And yeah, he said, I didn't really hear what he said. I didn't, I don't really know, but he actually wasn't really too happy with the chair empire himself. So, you know, the match was just a little bit of a mess overall, but Bublik actually offered to continue the match. He was like, it's totally fine with me if that's, if that's a possibility, which is, you know, well done by him. But uh, turns out it's not a possibility. The match was suspended. Andre was defaulted and uh, yeah, he got his prize money and his points back, but the reputation is kind of, you know, now he has a default history and his 
history for the rest of his career, which is never good. And I just think that some, something like a default, if, if it has to happen, it needs really solid proof and a really, you know, harsh something to happen for a player to get defaulted. And not just someone saying that, yeah, he's a whatever. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about the situation in the comments below, but yeah, it's just sad. It was time for Daniel's semi-final match, and as you all probably already know, he lost that match, unfortunately, and it was really, really sad to say the least. Obviously, Daniel wasn't in his best shape at the time, and the odds with the injured shoulder and this opponent were almost not in his favor, though I was still hoping for a W and a warm-up for the final, and hopefully, you know, also Daniel taking the title, but unfortunately, it couldn't happen. On the day of the final, although I didn't have Daniel to warm him up, I still went to the club to, well, you know, play a little bit, chill and watch the final. I actually watched the final with all of the ladies from the tournament desk, which was kind of an interesting experience. <laughs> That's it. And then this happened. Okay, so we're sitting here with Kumba. And I have my accreditation over here next <laughs> Guys, tell me if this is wrong or not. It is not wrong in my opinion. Kumba, Kumba says you can't even see me. Hold on. <laughs> oh my god. Wait. This okay, it's not Yeah, so I'm thinking that if he doesn't come back for it, I'll just take it. Yes. No? Yes. I'm like the little devil side, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, guys, this is how I got Andre Rublev's accreditation. And Andre, by the way, I just had this for safekeeping. If you want it back, I'll gladly return it. Absolutely no problem. But anyways, Glads, this is the last episode of the Dubai GT3 ATP 500 and WTA 1000 series of 2024. I really, really hope you've enjoyed it. I have to say huge thanks to everyone who organized these two beautiful events. It was an absolute pleasure and honor to be taking part in this as a hitting partner for the second time in a row and uh, yeah Dubai GT free loads of love to you and uh, special thanks to Kumba Omar and Sara you guys are just the best love to the moon and back and you glads stay tuned because there's a lot more fun content coming up and I will see you in the next one Bye -bye.